I'm Dado Too Spicy, and this is Too Spicy FL, and that is so much has been happening. Is my mic on? Is it working now? Okay, I think it's on now. And Caleb Williams' struggles is normal. I think it's normal. DJ Moore was completely frustrated with him, and what we have to realize is, I just want to show you one thing for a minute. This is Justin Fields right here. This is Justin Fields from last year, and this is Caleb Williams from week two. The exact same problems that Justin Fields was having, the reason why he had to run for over a thousand yards, the reason why he couldn't complete a lot of deep passes is because of this offensive line. Everybody wanted to blame Justin Fields and his feet moving and us having a running back at quarterback, all that bullshit. And now we see a legitimate passing quarterback who can sit back in a shotgun and play the shotgun all day, every day. And he struggles. He struggled because the offensive line is the exact same as last year. The changes that they made in the offensive line, I mean, it's like I said, it's only week two. It's only week two. Changes can be made in a 17-week season. But let's not act like Justin Fields wasn't having the same struggles with this offensive line. They they trying to turn us against Justin Fields and make it seem like Justin Fields was ass. But this is the reality of it. This is the reality of it. The Bears have no offensive line. He was terrible the second game. But I think every, I think he will improve, improve, improve because that's just the nature of Caleb Williams. People want Caleb Williams to suck so bad, like especially here in Chicago. People, what people, what the world don't understand is Chicago is home of some of the most haters, like hating haters, like like they these motherfuckers some haters. They want to see Caleb Williams is. Chicago is literally the home of the haters. And what you got to understand, and, and it, I'm saying that I'm from Chicago, bro. I'm a hater, too. I hate all the time. It's in my bloodline to be a hater, motherfucker. I grew up here. And people are hating on Caleb Williams so much that they just want to see him fail instead of see Caleb Williams succeed and take the Bears to the playoffs. Which I already said they're not going to the playoffs. They're only going to win six games this year. I got them having a top ten pick. They're not going to be good this year. They're going to be better. They're going to be a lot better next year. But this year, this is the I just I just don't understand like this is the face they had in week two, and this is the face Justin Field had last year. Time to worry about Bryce Young. I don't think it's time to worry about Bryce Young at all. I think that what we have to realize, I truly believe if CJ Stroud would have went to the Panthers, he wouldn't be this good. I believe if 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 Bryce Young would have went to the Texans, he would be would have been better. What people don't realize is the Panther the the Texans took the necessary steps to make uh, to make CJ Stroud better. The Texans took those steps before he even got there. The Texans only thing the Texans needed was a quarterback. That's it. Here at the Panthers with Bryce Young, he is the most talented player on the team. That is a lot to say that your quarterback is more talented than your wide receivers. Your quarterback is more talented than your offensive line. Your quarterback is more talented than your running back. And people don't watch football enough to understand that you have to watch this game. You have to watch Bryce Young play to understand his struggles. You can't sit down and watch fucking clips and all that bullshit. You have to watch the game. Because I say his struggles are because the Carolina Panthers did not put him in a position to win. That defense is ass. That offensive line is ass. And for some reason, in week two, the game has not slowed down for Bryce Young because he's always running. And plus, he's 5'10", 5'9", 5'8". He's like a midget out there. Baker McFear is perfect. For the Bucks, I think he all right, bro. I mean, he Baker Mayfield. I ain't got shit to say. The nigga went to Oklahoma. I'm a UT type nigga, so, you know, Longhorn Nations. I think the nigga, I, 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 I'm trying not to say anything bad because he went to uh, Oklahoma, but he whatever. Whatever. It's Baker Mayfield. He, he going to be ass at the end of the season. People love him now. They're going to hate him later. Bengals will bounce back from 0-2. I don't fucking think so. I think, if, I think it's really important to note that week three is really important for the Bengals. Their upcoming schedule is something like deadly. Their schedule that's coming up. Is there's no bounce back, so they need to win a couple of these games that they can. They if they go in three, there's no question in my mind that they will miss the playoffs. They will miss the playoffs. For some reason, Chase Young just has this big head for, you know, like, for the second best wide receiver in the league. He just feel he has no need to prove himself. He's out there making an ass of himself. He's hurting the team. He has he has this aura that Stephen Diggs had when he was at the Vikings when everybody was starting to get tired of him. You can kind of see it. People are starting to get tired of Jamar Chase because he's out there crying. Bullshitting, talking shit. He's not playing. He's not running his routes all the way through. He's demanding the ball, but he's not running good routes. Like, come on, bro. I would trade him and get and get a shit ton for him. I would trade him and I will build my team off of trading him because you still got T. Higgins. And T. Higgins is just as good as Jamar Chase, but they we just never see that because Jamar Chase always has the ball. Vikings are legit with Sam Darnold. Of course they are. Sam, people act like Sam Darnold is a really bad quarterback. I like Sam Darnold in college. I like Sam Darnold when he was at the 49ers last year. He sat down with the 49ers and he learned how to play in tough systems. I said the same thing about Zach Wilson from BYU. Zach Wilson was not in a system that fits his style of play. When Zach Wilson was at BYU, he was a shotgun quarterback. Then when he goes to the Jets, he's under center. That's weird for a lot of quarterbacks. That's weird. That's like us taking badging from the Chicago Bears, the second string from Badger, who we all love here in Chicago, and taking him and putting him under center all the time. Badger's a shotgun quarterback. He's not an under center guy. 
He's not understanding guy. So, of course, Sam, it's not shocking that Sam Darnold's doing this to me, personally, a person that watches football that likes Sam Darnold. I want to. I like Sam Darnold. He's just another system quarterback. A lot of these quarterbacks are just system quarterbacks. They need to find a team that believes in them, that allow them the chance to grow. If 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 a quarterback, if a coach believes in a player, he's going to give him that time to grow and be the best that he can. And that's what you're seeing with Sam Darnold. All that hard work is paying off for Sam Darnold. Lions aren't the NFC best team yet. Of course they're not. Of course they're not. Bear down, baby. What the fuck? Just because we number three on the chart don't mean nothing. You think the Vikings go hold the number one spot forever, baby? Let's be real. Let's be real. I just I just praise Sam Darnold, but at the end of the day, I'm a fucking Bears fan, bro. I don't give a fuck about no Vikings. You know that shit ridiculous. Purple, white, and gold. What the fuck is that? Of course they're not. Of course they're not. At the end of the season, I believe that the Lions will take over their number one spot.